Welcome to the Passionpreneur Experience, where I examine the thoughts, energy, and strategy a side hustler needs to grow their entrepreneurial dreams, all while they work their corporate nine-to-five day job. I'm your host, Bridget Cobb. Now let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Passionpreneur Experience. Uh, Today I am recording. It is cold outside. My throat is feeling it now that we're in going into winter. I've got mint tea on standby. I will edit out as many coughs as possible. But just saying, we're going into winter. I live in Seattle. It's rainy and cold. And that's what you get. And this is actually quite timely because what are we talking about today? We are talking about energy and the energy vortex. I don't know how often I have heard, and it has been a lot, uh, but when I talk to passionpreneurs out there that they work that full 9 to 5, it's called a 9 to 5 for a reason because you are working from 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. or some variation of that. It's a full-ass day. You are working that, and then uh, you are trying to create your business, your own personal business, on the side. And time and time again, I hear, I have no energy left when I am done with my 9 to 5. That is like an energy sucker. It, It kills the energy that I have, and when I get home, I've got nothing left for my own business. And I can't tell you how common this is because one, we are human. We are human and uh, our energy gets drained. (laughs) It's not infinite uh, and it is working a nine to five is a a full deal. It's a big thing, right? So, uh, you know, many of us have very high pressure jobs. Everybody has pressure in their jobs and, uh, and that takes our time and energy and brain matter uh, and and all of that can get chewed up uh, pretty quickly during the day. So when we get home at 5 p.m. and uh, we're tired and we're hungry, the last thing we're thinking about is, wow, I can't wait to sit down and start working on my business. Uh, when I first launched uh, Bridget Cobb Coaching, I actually set my business hours on Acuity where you could book me for coaching from 6 to 9 p.m. So I was working from 9 to 5 and then open for coaching sessions from 6 to 9. That's crazy, right? That's that's tough. That's a full day. And so it's very easy to, um, to suffer from that energy vortex and say, how do I muster the energy to commit to my own business when I am so passionate about that and I want it to grow and succeed and, uh, and thrive. So I wanted to take a look at that today and call that out uh, specifically. And the first thing that I really want to look at is expectations. So I have very defined expectations for my performance in my corporate gig. All right? In fact, those uh, expectations, uh, I don't have to necessarily even set for myself. My company is happy to lay those out for me uh, and for me to align to. Uh, you can also be setting your own expectations, setting your own bar, and, and setting your own goals, and uh, even raising that bar from where the company expects you to go. So that is very natural. That that comes to me quite naturally, and I'm used to setting high expectations for myself in my corporate life. Uh, so how does that affect the type of expectations I set for my side business? Well, I can tell you it affects it quite a bit uh, because I often set the very same expectations for myself for my side business. Now, I love setting big goals and I believe in big goals. So this is not something I'm dissuading you from doing. And I'm pretty sure dissuading is a word. If not, we're going with it. Uh, I am not trying to get you to not set big goals. That I definitely want you to do. Expectations come along with goals, however, and uh, those expectations can come around uh, time, 
uh, and uh, time to get to the goal, how I'm going to get to the goal. Uh, and, and this is where we start to differentiate because when we think of our corporate effectiveness and, and the type of energy we bring to our corporate world, we often find that uh, we've got a team around us uh, rallying and putting in their own efforts and their own brainwaves. We, we've got other people that we report to or might report to us and are contributing to um, the greater project. When you come home to your own business, it might just be you. You might be a solopreneur like I am. And so everything falls on your shoulders. You're all roles all the time. So are you setting the same types of goals and expectations for yourself in your own business as you are in your corporate life? If you are, you can very quickly see how when you're in your corporate life, you've got all this uh, other energy around you, contributing, helping, multitasking, delegating. Uh, and so a lot of work can get done amongst many hands. If you're putting that same filter to your day job or to your side hustle, rather, and expecting the same type of output uh, and the same amount of energy, that can run into some trouble sometimes uh, for us mentally. And I mean, I know I certainly have suffered from it, expecting the same rapid output uh, and rapid growth in my side business. Now, let me go back again and look at the hours that I had set for myself. Okay, corporate job, nine to five, those hours kind of set for me. Side hustle job, Bridget Cub Coaching, three or sorry, six to 9 p.m. That's a difference of eight hours a day to three hours a day. And let's not forget those are stacked back to back. So corporate goes first, that gets the first chunk of the day, and then and the lion's share. And then I uh, go second, my business, that's the back half of the day, going into 9 p.m. I mean, by that time, talk about energy drain, (laughs) you are toast. All right, so the first thing I encourage you to do is get really clear on the types of expectations that you've set for your business. Now, if you expect the same type of growth uh, that and and, and uh, expansion and development that you could achieve in your corporate life, and you're expecting that out of your side hustle, that's fine. That's great. Understand that, and then put the re- realistic reality fo- filter on it and take a look at it. Is it possible to do that with the amount of time that you have? And the day, t- the daylight hours, all of that, uh, is, it a poss- is it possible to achieve? If it's not possible to achieve with your current status, how you're doing it, let's say you're a solopreneur, now it's time to start looking at other strategies, different ways that you can approach to get the same solution. Uh, you may find, look, I think actually I've been way too harsh on myself and uh, I need to level set. I'm still going for that goal. I'm still going uh, for that uh, level of achievement. I just need to understand uh, what I'm working with on both sides and what kind of energy I have and, uh, and what I can do with that. All right, so you may find that I'm very well aware of the type of energy that I can put in and where I can fit that in, in and around my day job. I will apply that to the goal. And now I realize, okay, that will get me 25% of the way there. Uh, maybe not 100%. And what other things can I do to get me 75%? Or maybe it's the other way. It'll get me 75% of the way there and I'm missing 25%. So let's take a look at some of those things. One thing that's often available to you in your day job that may not be available to you in your side hustle is the power of delegation. All right, so how can we bring that in to the side hustle? Um, And a lot of times I hear, you know, instant objection. Well, I don't have, uh, I'm, I'm a solopreneur. It's just me. I do everything on my own. Okay, that's fine. You do have the opportunity to bring in a partner. It's possible. If you're feeling like, I really, I really want to achieve this goal, I really want to get there, then great, let's be open to some strategies to get you there. And one of them is a partnership. So that means you're bringing somebody else into the business, you're expanding the headcount potentially, taking on a partner, taking on uh, a 2IC, second in command, 
something like that. You could actually hire, start hiring full-time staff to get you to that goal. Everyone's going to be different and monetarily in a different place, but it's about opening up what's available to you at that moment. All right, so partnership is a definite option. Want to take one step back and go temporary? You could do a VA. That's a virtual assistant. Virtual assistants are a magical resource out there. There are people that will be your temporary or part-time assistant. And you can hire them hourly to do uh, tasks that you define. And there'll be different virtual assistants out there that specialize in different skill sets. But let's say you say, I just, social media, not my thing. I really don't have the energy uh, to put into social media. You can hire a VA to do that work for you. All right, so that takes a little bit of planning. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But uh, you can take those tasks and delegate. Uh, You also get into uh, going all the way to the end of the spectrum, volunteers. Depending on the type of business that you have, uh, you might uh, be able to get uh, temps or volunteers or interns, um, even from uh, high schools and colleges to see if they want some work experience, and they may be able to come along with you and, and give you some assistance. So... There are a couple of different options out there. Uh, Have a look around, but I know often as a solopreneur, we feel like we must carry all of that weight ourselves. And you don't have to. I mean, who says that uh, you're not a true entrepreneur if you're not, uh, if, if you give anything away or if you get any assistance? Not true. All right, so that's the first thing. If you are setting those goals, and you're feeling like, I just, I do not have the energy to get there, then let's start looking at ways that you can balance the uh, the tax that's on your energy with some assistance. And that might be a partnership, a virtual assistant, or even a volunteer. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is starting to crack. So enjoy. Uh, all right, let's take a look next around efficiency strategies. Now, this is an interesting one because this is this still is still about output from you. And when we talk about uh, this, I have no energy left. Uh, Bridget, why are you giving me uh, strategies around doing more? <laughs> okay, well, let's just take a look at it first of all. The first thing I want to suggest to you is planning and really taking a hard look at how you plan your week your months, or even quarters or years, all right? But if we want to get really effective, let's focus down on, let's say, weeks and months. When you take time to plan, and let's say, for instance, what I'm doing with podcasts is I batch them. And actually, that's my next point. I'm going to blend those two because they really do go together. Planning is a powerful exercise that can help you eliminate wastage. And what I mean by that is, you are right, you have a finite amount of energy in a day. So we tend to spend a lot of time wasting time, and we don't even realize it because we're not planned. We don't have a planned agenda. We say, well, I will definitely get to working on my business today for an hour. I'm not quite sure when, I'll just get it fit in. If you take time in the beginning of the week to say, let me look at this week in its entirety. I've got all these activities going on. I know my nine to five's blocked out. I can block that out right away. Uh, And I'm going to look at all the other things in my life that are activities that I need to do, non-negotiables, negotiables, negotiables, all those little time packages that come along your week. Lay it out so you can see it on a piece of paper and you can start to block that time. I will dedicate one hour here. I will dedicate two hours there. All right, and that becomes a non-negotiable. That's now booked in. And when you block the time, you put it in and say, I'm going to focus 100% for that hour. No distractions. I'm not going to do it while I'm watching TV or while I've got my phone near me and I'm surfing the, the, the internet. I'm going to focus for that hour. 
you can get so much more done. And that's an efficient use of limited energy. All right, so if you know that you burn energy, uh, do a bit of a download here. Look at your calendar and see how much time am I wasting um, and and how much time am I burning on, let's say, just just surfing the internet. And, and you know what comes with that, guys. You're on any social platform and you are literally burning energy because you know there's all sorts of thoughts coming up about what you're seeing on the internet and how you're comparing yourself to friend A and you're worried about friend B's business and how they're doing so much better than you. And so that's wasted energy, I can tell you. Better use of your time, block it out on your calendar. And this starts to go with batching, which is my next point. What batching means is that you, let's say you have a weekly email that you send out, or even daily if you're, or, you know, and, and talk about social media. Let's say you want to post something every day, at least one thing you're going to post every day uh, of the week. And that's kind of your touch point out there, growing your business. You can plan all of those touch points in that one hour. So you dedicate now one hour on a Monday. And let's say for you, you know that social media is really important to your business. So you want to give quality time there where you're fresh and you've got the energy you want to commit to that. So maybe on a Monday you say, that's worth getting up early for. I'm going to do that before work on a Monday morning. I'm going to get up at 6 instead of 7. And I'm going to spend from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. planning out my week's social posts. I'm going to write them all out in that hour. And then I can even enter them in to Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or wherever you are. And most of those platforms have scheduled releases. So you could schedule them all in or you could line them up and save them. So then when you're ready to post, you just go in and you post the next one batching those and I'm batching uh, podcast episodes. So I might tape a few episodes in a row, all in one sitting, one after another after another. And then I batch the editing process. So I'm going to edit all of those the next weekend. So that when I'm done, I've got three to five podcast episodes lined up and ready to go on a slow once a week release. But that means I'm only recording podcasts every five weeks instead of every week, which can sometimes energy-wise be a little bit draining. I've got to do this every single week, whereas if I can sit down for, let's say I block out two hours and man, I'm going to pump this through. I'm going to, I've am going to. i already done the planning ahead of time, so I've planned out all the content ahead of time. I'm really starting to kind of space that out for myself. So that, and I know that well in advance. I know the dates that I'm going to be planning, recording, and editing for about six months out. Very predictable. I can block it into my calendar now, and then I kind of work around it with everything else I've got going on in my life. All right, lastly, let's talk about um, setting goals. And uh, when it comes to limited energy, I definitely encourage you to take a look at the oldie but a goodie SMART goals. And the reason I'm bringing up SMART goals now, I would never use a SMART goal to plan a large, one of those big, hairy, audacious goals. All right? So uh, that's not what a SMART goal is for, uh, for. A SMART goal is for actionable steps. So once you get the big goal out there, what the, the big picture goal is, you might not have a exact date and time of when that's going to happen, but you know where you're headed, you can start to break that down with SMART goals. If you're not familiar, SMART goals, uh, it's an acronym. All right. So SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based or timely. You might hear a couple different descriptions there. So again, specific, what specifically do you need to achieve? Measurable, how are you going to measure that you've achieved it? Uh, achievable, so is this something that can actually be done with the time, energy, resources that you have available? And really that R is reasonable or realistic. So the time frame that you're setting forth with the T 
is that a realistic time frame to get that done? The T is going to be the date and time that you're going to achieve that goal. Now, the beautiful thing about SMART goals is, is that you can run that goal that you're setting for that task, whatever it might be through the, the, the acronym there, and discover that you've in fact set something up that uh, maybe you've set yourself up to fail. So let's say you've decided I'm going to start a podcast for my business. And you say, I'm going to have this podcast done by the end of the week. And then after you start running it through the filter, you, you can say, yep, yeah, I'm going to have a podcast episode done by that. That's very specific. I'm going to have it completed as in recorded and edited um, measurable. I know I'll have the MP3 file uh, all wrapped up and ready to go. Is it achievable? Okay, let me start to look at my calendar. Let me start breaking this down because if, if I'm setting, let's say Friday 5 p.m. is my deadline and it's Monday morning, can I get all of those steps done? Is it realistic? So I'm looking at the achievable realistic um, acronym to say, is this? am I really able to get this done in five days? If I'm not able to confidently lay out that task list, uh, and, and maybe I then start uh, setting smaller goals off of that, Monday I'm going to do this. This is my goal. I run it through the full smart filter. Uh, Tuesday is this. Th- uh, you know, So you're going through recording. You might find out, hey, I need to buy a microphone. I need to research, uh, I don't know what I'm going to edit this thing on. I don't have any editing software. Okay, so that's where all these little steps start to come out. You can do that at the very beginning in your planning stage. You might want to readjust and say, by the end of the week, I will have all of the software recording equipment that I need so that the next week I can record. Okay, so you're just looking at how to really filter and, and set up those goals for success And if you're finding that you're going through these SMART goals, you still want to get this thing done. You're getting this podcast done come hell or high water on Friday, but it is not achievable or realistic for you on your own. Go back up. Is delegation possible? Can I pay someone to edit this for me? Can I um, uh, hire someone to help me with the production aspect of a podcast? All right, so you've got different levels there, and depending on the investment you want to put in and how you've prioritized this task, that'll tell you the amount of energy that you need to bring or plan into your week to get it achieved. All right, so to kind of look at this at the end of the day, let's look at different types of energy. We've got physical energy. We've got mental energy. They're both important. They both come into play uh, when it comes to how we show up for our, biz- our, our business and what kind of energy we can bring to our business. So you know, physical energy, how does that uh, show up and, and what, what affects your physical energy? Things like your diet. Right? If you're finding just at the end of your nine to five, if you've got nothing left, take a look at your diet. Are you eating a healthy diet? Are you relying too much on caffeine? Are you crashing? Is sugar impacting your energy levels where they're spiking and crashing? You know, take a look at when you're eating throughout the day. What about exercise? And I know in a lot of cases we think, I don't have the energy to exercise. Well, you want me to exercise? Exercise can actually help create more energy. It actually can bring us to a healthier state. And allow us to have longer lasting, uh, more natural energy fueled by our own body rather than having to rely on supplements or caffeine or sugar. Uh, Our work routine. So if we are physically tired at the end of the day, uh, is there an opportunity to work on your business at another time of the day? Maybe in the morning. Uh, or if your, let's say your day job is ending quite late, um, you know, what do the weekends look like for you? Is there time to carve out an hour or two there? All right, and then sleep. Sleep is so important, and it does help you regulate healthy energy throughout the day. Make sure you are getting enough sleep. 
I know that um, we're going to talk about mental energy here, but a lot of times we think, I just need some time on the couch. I just want to zone out for a bit and 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 think of nothing and look at the tube and, you know, the boob tube and just zone out. That time is probably better spent sleeping. All right, so get a good night's sleep, uh, and that might mean cutting out and watching your diet so that you're not affecting that with uh, um, poor eating habits that might affect your sleep. We talk about mental energy. You know, you may have a hard-hitting day job that really requires a lot of mental output. Okay, that happens a lot, and it's very common that you'd want to you give your all. Of course, you want to during uh, during your nine to five. So again, let's go back to to looking at when you dedicate time to your business, to your own personal business. Uh, maybe you move those times around. Okay, so now maybe you do do some early mornings. I love what Rachel Hollis uh, says, and, and I went to this conference, like I, I told you guys, and she was there, and she's speaking, and she said, oh, is it hard? Oh, well, get over it. Hard's the price of admission, and it kind of made me laugh, because I was thinking, oh, yeah, I, I'm sitting there going, but this is hard. <laughs> I can't do this. Uh, I don't like to get up early. I'm not a morning person. And let me tell you, you keep telling yourself and not you're not a morning person, and yes, you'll be absolutely right. That that's a really strong mental mindset. I don't I don't function well in the morning. Well, actually, you know what? That's not true because I've tested that and I have gotten up with resolve and I've done great things in the morning. So I know that's a story I've been telling myself for a long time, but when I decided that. I really wanted to have an impact with this business, and I was willing to put the time in and find the time, and I wanted to reserve some time where really my business was getting the best of me, it was in the morning. It was in the morning that I could wake up and really give that all and that attention and focus to my business. So play around with it. See what's available to you. Uh, Meditation is really powerful. So let's say you, you... do want to come home and do that work after a full day of your nine to five. Take a moment to reset, refocus, turn off the day's events, the meetings, the one-on-ones, the client conferences, whatever happened in your nine to five. It's time to turn that off consciously and turn on your entrepreneurial spirit. And you can do that through quick guided meditations, through things like Headspace, or uh, you could take a uh, a quick yoga class. You know, if time's of the essence, you could do something on YouTube. Pull up a little meditation or yoga or, or refocusing exercise and get yourself right again mentally before you jump into that work. And part of that, again, is just really understanding those expectations that you're setting for yourself, right? I've worked a nine to five. I've worked a full day of work today. What's reasonable for me to achieve today with where I am right now? And bring that forward, sit down, look at your plan that you've already set out for the day and understand I have dedicated an hour to do this. I'm going to put my phone away. The TV is not on. I'm not on the couch. Maybe I'm at a desk sitting where I can focus, and I'm going to get this work done. And then when I'm done, I'm done, done for the day, and I understand that I achieved the goal that I set for myself today. Tomorrow's another day. Check the plan. See what you've got coming up. All right, so this is just a way to take a look. Be really conscious about what uh, type of energy you are bringing to your business, the expectations that you're laying on yourself around your business, and a couple of different tips there on how if you are struggling with either mental or physical energy, uh, identifying which one you're really struggling with, maybe it's both, but then looking at different strategies that you can put in place to tackle that and to ensure that you are giving yourself the opportunity to kick some goals, to move forward, and also to re-strategize. And if you find I've planned it out 
and um, I could actually do more than X hours a week. I thought I could do five hours a week. It turns out once I really plan it out, I could do more than that. Um, or I've really reprioritized. I understand where my goals are. I want to get 10 hours worth of week done a week, uh, a week, but I physically do not have those in me because I have a family, because I have long commutes, I have whatever it is, uh, conferences. Now I'm going to look at strategies where I can still get that 10 hours of productivity, but it may not be me doing all of it. Maybe I'm pulling in a VA, maybe I'm uh, looking to collaborate with the, with another business or uh, identify a new tool to bring in that will help me automate. Okay, so these are different ways that you can balance that energy and make sure that you're showing up for yourself uh, and your business in a way that empowers you and, and brings you forward and keeps your business growing. So I will see you here. Thanks, as always, for joining me on the Passionpreneur Experience. I'll see you here next time. Bye. Are you building your side hustle business all on your own? Well, you don't have to. Engaging with and being accountable to a supportive community will increase your productivity and keep you on track. Join my private Facebook community, The Passionpreneur Experience, and connect with like-minded side hustlers just like you. Head to the show notes now for a link to the group and start building the business of your dreams.